You're listening to episode number 11 of the Queen of Your Castle podcast. Thank you for joining me here today. I know that the world is in turmoil, for lack of a better word, about the coronavirus, which is why I felt that it was important to have a conversation about what coronavirus means for stepmoms in these unprecedented and uncertain times. What I hope more than anything that this episode brings to you is a little bit of fact in this very opinion and emotion-based media cycle and news cycle that is going on right now. I have realized and noticed a whole lot of fear-mongering and people exploiting others in order to make a dollar, like people flipping toilet paper and selling toilet paper for 40 50 50, $60 a roll. I was on Facebook the other day and in Facebook marketplace, someone was auctioning off a pack of toilet paper. And I think that while as much as I am a business owner and I believe in doing what you need to do to make money, I also believe in a place of operating your business from a place of service. And when people show up in the world, whether it's at a job or at a business, we should be operating at a place of how can I make the world a better place? How can what I do bring this world to become a better place? So this episode is one of my efforts to make the world a better place in helping to soothe the uh, discontents and concerns of stepmoms who are wondering what the F are we supposed to do as we move forward through this with our schools closed and what are we supposed to do about visitation and all of that, th- all of that. So I want to extend an offer here for every stepmom who needs it. If you you are needing someone to help you walk through what is happening, please send me a message on Instagram at the step queen. And just let me know that finances are a little bit tight with you right now, but you are still in need of some type of support. And I would be happy to work with you in a place that we can both exchange our energy, but that I can still serve you because I show up every day to make the step up community a better place. And if I can make your life better throughout this time that everything is so uncertain, that would be my absolute honor. So send me a message at the step queen and I will be happy to support you in whatever ways I can. Where would you take your life if you knew you could not fail? I get it. As a stepmom, mom, and entrepreneur, sometimes it can feel like what everyone else expects of you versus what you dream about for yourself are on opposite ends of the spectrum. As a woman, you're taught from a very young age what society thinks you're worth based on how you look, how you behave, and how much money you're allowed to bring in. But I'm here to show you that you can be the woman who has it all and not just on the outside. I'm Brittany Lynch, and you are the queen of your castle. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of the Queen of Your Castle podcast. I am your host, Brittany Lynch. And I have to admit that our household has been infected by a a real nasty stomach bug over the last few days. And I am not operating at full capacity today. I honestly can't even remember the last time that I was as sick as I was last night. And I will tell you, There were a couple of times I was praying for the sweet release of death. (laughs) But here I am. We're on the way up. I'm on the way up. Seamus is on the way down, but uh, we're going to get through it. Anyway, I didn't really entirely feel like shooting this podcast episode because I would much rather be in bed with a cup of tea and the heating pad. However, I really strongly believe in honoring your commitments and I have made a commitment and I take responsibility for showing up on this podcast every single week for you. So here I am. And I also think that this is a really important conversation to be having right now. And as much as I do not want to put any more power behind what is happening in the world right now, you know, with coronavirus, I think it's an important conversation that we have specifically about how this affects 
stepmoms. I think that stepmoms have a really different and unique set of concerns about the coronavirus, like namely specifically around visitation and quarantine or social distancing, who has what responsibility, et cetera. So I do want to speak to this and I want to let you know that I see, I see the stepmoms out there that whatever is going on for you psychologically and emotionally and in every other way during this time, I do hold a lot of space for you. I have to admit when this, when this first came out, this first news of the coronavirus came out a little while ago, I was, <clears throat> I mean, I used to be a nurse. So I was like, oh, it's not a big deal. Right. But now I'm starting to get to the point where, especially since, you know, schools were just announced to be closed in Alberta, schools and daycares were just ordered by the government to be closed in Alberta. And, um, at that time, and I mean the last little while, but at that time, especially it became very apparent to me that these measures are being taken for a reason, um, which I'm going to get into in this episode. So what I'm intending to do, what I'm intending to do with this episode is not to contribute to the fear. I don't want to contribute to the fear. I don't want to contribute to the panic. I don't want to contribute to all this sensationalization and is that a word? Sensationalization? Sensation? Yeah. Anyway, I don't want to contribute to all of the, the big media explosion about what is going on. Okay. There have been a lot. I don't watch the news. I don't follow the news. I don't listen to the news, but I am informed anyway, because it's everywhere, right? Everybody's talking about this right now. And there've been a lot of commentaries and there have been a lot of memes there have been a lot of debates and there have been a lot of opinions that have been given and injected into our news feeds, into our inboxes, into everywhere. Like you cannot escape talk of coronavirus right now. And because of that, because of all of these different opinions and interpretations that are going on about what is coronavirus, I think that it's really hard to know what the F is actually going on. Like what is happening in our world right now? So even though I don't want to buy into the fear, this is also real. This is a real thing that's happening right now. And I hope that from this episode, I can honor your experience that you are having in this time while keeping this as fact-based and emotionless as possible. So if you've been following me for any length of time, then you know that I used to be a registered nurse. Before I started Step Queen, I was a registered nurse. So this is my disclaimer is that I'm not a physician. I'm not an epidemiologist. I am not a, I'm not a contagious disease specialist by any stretch of the imagination. However, I do have a fair grip of understanding of how diseases transfer. I have a fair grip on the understanding of viruses. And I also, most importantly of all, most importantly of all, is that I do know where to look and how to evaluate things that are being put out, information that's being put out, evidence that's being put out. I know how to evaluate that to tell whether or not it's science and fact-based or whether or not this is sensationalized media, okay? I do know where to look to figure out, is this evidence or is this opinion? So because of that, and with my knowledge from where I used to work, how I used to work, what I used to do, what I hope to do is to give you the facts about the virus that have been reported by the World Health Organization. If you're not familiar with the WHO or the World Health Organization, basically they're an organization. They have offices in 150 countries in the world, and the, w the WHO is responsible to direct the health responses for the countries that make up the United Nations. So they're basically like the boss. They're the boss of health responses. The CDC looks to the World Health Organization for direction in times like this. So these are the facts about coronavirus, COVID-19, the novel coronavirus. You'll have seen all of those things spoken about. But these are the facts as reported by the WHO 
And then I'm going to speak to my interpretation of what this means for the challenges in a step family during this time. I'm going to give you some questions to ponder about how to proceed, how to best proceed, and at least one tool that you can use to reduce your stress during this time. So first things first, what the F, what exactly is the coronavirus? Okay. So COVID-19 is what is is the new coronavirus that's happening right now. And it's called the new coronavirus for a reason that I'll tell you in a second. But COVID-19 is one strain or one specific type of virus that comes from the family of coronaviruses. So the coronavirus family in itself is a large family of viruses, okay? And the this large family of viruses all share certain characteristics. This family can cause a, a whole big wide range of illness types and illness symptoms. So they could be things like having the symptoms of a simple common cold to more severe diseases like SARS and MERS that we have seen over the last little while. So if you get infected by any virus from the coronavirus family, then you could get a different, any handful of symptoms that are attributed to this family of viruses. Usually this includes respiratory symptoms, fever, cough, shortness of breath, trouble breathing. And in severe cases, infection can lead to pneumonia, kidney failure, or even death. Okay. But don't freak out because here is the good news. All right. Here's the good news. The coronavirus family all shares these specific symptoms. Now, COVID-19, which is the new one, okay, this is why I said it's important to re- that we pay attention to this new part. COVID-19 is one strain of a virus from the coronavirus virus family. But most people who become infected with COVID-19, the new one, the new strain from this family, are only going to experience mild illness and they will recover. That is right from the WHO website, okay? So for most people who catch this, it will feel, you're not going to feel awesome, but it's probably going to feel like a really bad cold, a really bad common cold. You're going to have a dry cough. You're going to have a runny nose. You might have a fever. You might have some body aches. You might have some chills. But if you are most people, meaning if you are generally healthy, then you most likely do not need to worry even if you catch it. You don't need to worry about getting more sick than feeling like you caught a cold or the flu. Okay. So the WHO has reported that 80% 80%, that's a lot, 80% of people who catch it do not need any special treatment. And by special treatment, I am assuming that they mean things like life-saving measures inside of a hospital. However, the people who are at most at risk for becoming very ill or for dying from COVID-19 are people who are older than 60 years old or people who have heart disease, high blood pressure, any kind of lung disease or respiratory diseases because COVID goes for the lungs, or if you have been diagnosed with diabetes, I'm assuming type one or type two, okay? Now this part is important. The reason that it's being recommended to practice what we have been encouraged to practice, this thing called social distancing, which basically means we're supposed to avoid crowded places. We're supposed to hang out at home. The reason that Alberta, where I live, has canceled schools. And from what I've seen, a lot of other places have canceled schools and canceled daycares. The reason that we are being encouraged to practice social distancing and keep our distance from other human beings is yes, of course, so that you don't catch the virus, right? You don't want to catch the virus. You don't want to get sick. But most likely, if you're in the 80% of people, you're just going to get sick and you'll get better. The reason we're encouraged to practice social distancing is so even if you do catch it, since you're probably not going to come down with a severe case of it, 
and you're only likely going to have a mild set of symptoms, you would probably feel if they didn't tell us we have to practice social distancing and they didn't shut down our schools and they didn't tell us stay home from work, if they didn't tell us this because your symptoms wouldn't be very bad, you would probably feel well enough to leave your house, okay? So most healthy people have a general consensus that they think, well, I just have a cold, it's not that bad. If I had COVID-19, I would be pretty sick. So I obviously don't have it. Right? If I had COVID-19, I would be dying. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be leaving my house. So since I only have this like cold and this runny nose, I'm just going to go out anyways. But I want you to hear this. The risk of COVID-19 is not to young, healthy people who do not have underlying medical conditions. But young, healthy people who do not have underlying medical conditions are the ones who are spreading it to people who are 60 years or or older, or people who have compromised immune systems, or people who have underlying medical conditions. So it's less likely that we're being asked to stay home to save ourselves, and more likely that we're being asked to stay home to keep the bug from spreading to the people who are most likely to get very sick or die from it. So in other words, the more young, healthy people like you and I who catch it, the more people there will be to spread it to people who might die from it. And the more people who spread it, the higher the likelihood that the virus is going to infect someone who is not young and not healthy. So this is a numbers game. If 80%, if 80% of 100 people, okay, let's just say this was only going to infect 100 people. If 80% of 100 people catch a mild case, that means 80% of people are fine, but 20%, which is 20 people out of 100, are going to need some kind of medical treatment. Now, what happens when we increase the number of people who catch it from 100 people to 100,000 people? This means that 80,000 people are going to be fine. They're just going to catch a mild case of it. 80,000 people out of 100,000 people are going to be fine. But This also means that 20,000 people, even though it's 20%, 20,000 people are still going to need some kind of medical help. And in my interpretation, from when I used to work in the healthcare system, our healthcare system cannot accommodate that kind of influx of people. So the best thing to do is for us to stay home. Yes, it's uncomfortable. Yes, it doesn't feel good. Yes, humans are social creatures. Yes, we need to go to work. Yes, kids need to go to school. But the risks of giving this to more people than our healthcare system can tolerate are way higher than your kids missing a few months of school or you missing a few months of a paycheck. And I'm not saying that to discount the stresses that economically this is bringing up for a lot of people because trust me, I feel it. I feel that which is why I'm so grateful to own a business where I do not have to leave my house and I don't require other people to leave their houses in order to get access to psychological and emotional and spiritual care because nothing is going to be more important in the coming months than us, you, me, our families taking care of their physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional health period, the end. So the last piece of the fact puzzle that I want to talk about that I think is important and I think is relevant is to talk specifically about how you can catch the virus and how it is spread. Because if you know how you can catch it and you know how it's spread, you know how to make sure that you don't catch it and that you don't spread it. So when you cough or when you sneeze, there are little tiny droplets of water that are expelled from your mouth and from your nose. Those come from your lungs. So if somebody has COVID-19, then the virus lives inside of those droplets because that water used to live inside of your lungs. So if you cough in your hand and then you touch a doorknob and then your 80-year-old grandma touches the doorknob and then she rubs her face, then she is at risk of catching the virus because she breathes it in, it goes into her lungs, she catches the virus, and then she could become very, very ill. 
Also, if you are like me and you have a two-year-old son named Rory who is a wild child and coughs in your face and sneezes in your face, you can also catch it that way because when anyone coughs or anyone sneezes, they spray out water. And if you have the virus, the virus is carried inside of that water, inside of those droplets. So what I want you to imagine is what, what does it look like when you spray a bottle of hairspray? Those little droplets of hairspray, hairspray, they fly through the air, right? If you, if you hairspray your, your hair, the hairspray flies through the air and those droplets end up on your counters and on your mirror and on your tap. Plus you can smell the scent of it, even if you're a few feet away. Okay. So I want you to imagine that COVID is like hairspray. If someone coughs or someone sneezes, it's basically like they've sprayed their hairspray on that area in that air. And then if you go and touch a place that the spray has landed on, or you breathe it in, or you have the potential to touch the surface and then breathe it in. If you're the 80% of people who won't get very sick, then it's not a huge deal unless you catch it and then you go out in public and now you're spraying your infected hairspray, or you have people who are coming to your house who you spray your hairspray on. See what I'm saying? This is the reason that it's important that we wash our hands, that we cough into the crook of our elbows instead of into our hands that touch every other surface. And most of all, this is the reason that it's important that we stay home because we cannot see these germs. We cannot see the virus. We cannot see where someone has sprayed their hairspray. So the more that we go out in public, the more that our kids go to school, the more that we go to work, the more that we leave our houses, the more likely we are to come in contact with somebody else's hairspray. And the more likely we are to take that hairspray in, and then we leave the house and we start spraying our hairspray for place for other people to pick it up in places that they were not aware of. So there are a few things that you can do in order to A, make sure that you do not become infected with the virus and B, to make sure that you do not spread the virus so that other people can get infected of it. And those are as simple as washing your hands with soap and water for 20 seconds, rubbing with hand sanitizer, covering your cough, and just just staying home. Okay, just staying home. Now... This is where the complexity falls, right? When you're in a step family, like sure. Most people are like, oh yeah, sure. We'll stay home. We'll take vacation. We'll do whatever. We'll, we'll stay home. Take vacation. I mean, staycation. But most families can say, okay, sure. We'll stay home. We'll stay in quarantine. We'll, we won't leave our house till this dies out. Like we'll keep the kids home. No big deal. We've got some savings. Like we'll be fine. However, this doesn't look the same in step families. Am I right? So what does COVID mean? in the step family world. What does COVID-19 mean in the step family world? First of all, I want to address that I'm sure, I'm almost certain that I'm not the only stepmom who has had a thought of like, now what? Right? Like now, now what the F, what the F am I supposed to do? What does this look like for visitation? Is my stepson still going to be coming back and forth from his mom's house to our house? How do you deal with him coming back and forth? And what about Rory, my two-year-old? Like, is my stepson allowed to bring this back and forth? What is his mom going to quarantine? Is his mom going to stay at home? Is she going to go visit her sister who was just visiting this person? Like, are we still going to end up getting it this way? So how do I control what's going on inside of my house? How do I deal with all of this fear? How do I deal with co-parenting through all of this fear? What does this look like for me? I work from home, right? How am I supposed to do that when daycares are closed and Rory needs 100% constant supervision and my stepson, my stepson's mom works out of the house and he needs childcare. So now does this mean that I'm on the hook for all of the kids while I still have a job to do? And so you can see that it's very easy to get trapped into this thought, this thought, all of these thoughts, right? Like what the F are we supposed to do? What the fuck are we supposed to do now? So first things first, this is probably the most important thing. First things first is that if you are somebody who has a compromised immune system, if you're older than 60, if you have heart disease, if you have diabetes, if you smoke cigarettes, if you are obese, 
if you have any kind of respiratory illness or any kind of respiratory disease, then it is recommended by the WHO that you take measures to limit your contact with everyone right now, period. So if you're a stepmom that has a compromised immune system due to any of those factors, that means also limiting contact with your partner. That means also limiting contact with your mom. That means also limiting contact with your sisters. That means that if you are at risk to be the 20% of people who are going to get really effing sick from this disease and potentially die, that means it's your responsibility, even though it's not fun to lock yourself in a room, but it's your responsibility to stay the F away from people. Okay. Don't trust. Don't trust other people to do what's best for you. You need to take responsibility for yourself. You need to take responsibility for your health. If, however, you are a young, healthy stepmom who does not have underlying medical conditions, then I would be willing to bet that more of your concerns have to do with the what ifs and the logistics of shared custody and of kids going back and forth or your interpretations about whether or not your partner's ex is doing things properly and abiding by social distancing recommendations, abiding by quarantine, if she's even going to tell you if the kids are sick, right? The logistics of what do we do with school closures? What is the future going to look like, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this is what I like to call hamster wheel thinking. So every single person on this planet has something that I call a hamster wheel inside of our minds. And this hamster wheel takes a thought, a thought that we think, it takes this thought, and then that thought gets on the hamster wheel and it can immediately turn into 4 million other thoughts. So an example of hamster wheel thinking would be, for example, my stepson is going to bring the virus here. He's going to bring it here from his mom's because his mom did, maybe didn't wash her hands when she got home from work and maybe someone at her office had that. So my stepson is going to bring it here and he's going to give it to me. And then I might end up with pneumonia and then I'm going to end up hospitalized. And then while I'm in the hospital, something's going to happen to Rory since I'm not there to ha- to watch Rory. And then if something happens to Rory, my husband, Seamus, is never going to forgive me. And if he doesn't forgive me, he's going to divorce me. And if he divorces me, I'm going to end up living underneath a bridge. Okay. You see how easy it is for our minds to go there. And I'm not alone when I say that this is where people's minds can go, because as I was saying that, there were probably things that you could identify with from something that hasn't even happened yet. Something that hasn't even happened yet that is not our reality can consume our minds in this way, okay? But what I want you to note here is that I literally just went in my mind, I went from my stepson going back to his mom's, coming back here, and then immediately within two seconds... I'm living under a bridge, right? 1.1 milliseconds in my mind on the hamster wheel. I'm living on a bridge. I'm living under a bridge, okay? So I don't even have this virus, right? My stepson has not given me this virus, but I already have it made up in my mind based on this hamster wheel that this is where we're going to go. And it's very easy when we are being inundated and obliterated by all of this media coverage that this is what is going to happen with our lives, So with that said, I would ask you to evaluate whether the stresses that you have right now are warranted and based in fact, or if your mind is maybe trapped on the hamster wheel and you're going ahead and trying to tell the future and creating a bunch of stories in your mind about what may or may not happen if your stepkids come back and forth between both homes. If this is a real threat, if this is a real possibility, then yes, of course, embrace that and take precautions and protect yourself and wash your hands and lock yourself in your room. But something that I want to address because I think it is very important specifically in this culture of women and this culture of stepmoms, because I know this culture and I know this community and I want to address this. If you are using coronavirus as an excuse not to see your stepkids or not to have them come over because of a threat that is not a real threat to your health, 
then I would invite you to consider whether this is really truly due to a risk to your physical health or if this is due to an underlying unresolved issue that you have with your stepkids or with their mother. These are two very, very different things. Being concerned about catching the virus and not wanting your stepkids there or not wanting any interaction with their mother. Those are not in the same playing field. So in my interpretation, it's not fair for stepmoms to play the coronavirus card to prevent kids from seeing one of their parents. Everything has changed very abruptly for our entire world. Not just you, not just me, not just our neighbor. Everything right now in our world is very different and is going to continue being different for an extended period of time. And right now, kids need their parents. And right now, kids need their parents to pay attention to the facts. And right now, kids need some kind of stability. Right now, my interaction, your interaction, your stepkids' interaction, your husband's interactions, our interaction with the world and with our communities as we know it is different. And as a kid, as a kid, they're not going to school, they're not playing sports, they're not going to dance, they're not going to ballet, they're not doing anything. The only places they have to go are home or outside, which is also a great alternative. But I think the best thing to do moving forward in a step family is to have a conversation with the other parent that you're co-parenting with. You need to agree on some social distancing guidelines And you need to allow the kids to maintain some type of normalcy in their lives and their structure, even if that normalcy contains moving back and forth between homes. So having a conversation with the other co-parent is going to be very, very important right now. Okay. And it is your responsibility as parents and as step parents to make sure that you are doing what is best for yourself while also remembering that your kids are going through a very, very interesting time. Brains are not fully developed until they are 25 years old. So if you are a 12 year old kid or you are a seven year old kid or you are a 16 year old kid or you are a 21 year old kid or a 24 year old kid looking around at the status of the world right now and somebody who married your dad said they can't come here because of the coronavirus, that is not going to feel very good and that is going to have long-term psychological implications. So I'm not saying that you as a stepmom are not valid in being concerned for your health and safety, but I'm saying do not pull the coronavirus card as an excuse to keep kids away from their parents. That's all I'm saying. So with that said... Now, more than ever, because I've just said that, now more than ever, most stepmoms are going to have a whole lot of feelings and a whole lot of triggers and a whole lot of hamster wheel thoughts. So here we are. Here we are with my recommendations about how to get through this over the next, who knows how long. We don't know how long it's going to be. One thing I think that the importance of cannot be understated is that having an online community, an online connection with other people is going to be very, very, very important in the coming months. But I've said it once, if I've said it a million times, your number one goal should be to protect your mindset and to be extremely aware of what type of content that you are consuming and what types of online communities that you are involved in because your thoughts become your reality. So if you are surrounding yourself with people who are predicting gloom and doom and destruction and the worst, then that is what is going to happen for you. If you are in a community that is only talking about how difficult it is to be at home all day with the kids and they're going to go crazy and they're trying to manipulate their partner into not having their stepkids come back and forth, that is becoming your reality. So now more than ever, it is so important to do a social media purge and to be extremely, extremely mindful of what types of media 
and what types of people that you are giving your attention to. Keeping in mind that people are acting from their best interests most of the time. So if somebody is looking for validation, if somebody is looking for somebody to say, yes, it's okay that you told your stepkids not to come, they're probably doing that because they want validation that it was okay that they manipulated their partner. Anyway, I'm going off on a tangent because as important as I think an online community will be right now, even more important than an online community is that you right now are being given an opportunity to take a look at your life on this side of the screen, on the other side of the screen. What is really important to you in your life? You are giving, you are being given a mirror right now to take a look at your life and evaluate what is important to you. And I really believe that it's times like these that we get perspective on how important our health is, our physical health, our emotional health, our spiritual health. How important is it that we are healthy all of the time so that when things like this happen, it doesn't break our worlds apart? It's times like these that we're faced with our mortality. Most people live life believing that they have 60 years left to live. But as this virus is showing us and this crisis is showing us, we have no idea. Life can change literally overnight. We start to realize that nothing we believed to be certain is certain. And a lot of people get really attached to planning their lives decades in the future. And I'm still one of those people. I'm still working on this of not trying to plan what my life is going to look like 20 years down the road because I don't know what it's going to look like tomorrow. All we have is this moment here today. No amount of thinking, no amount of hamster wheels, no amount of panicking, no amount of anxiety is going to create a different outcome. No amount of stress, no amount of binging on memes about covid If you are feeling out of control right now, that is because you are out of control. But nobody, including you, including me, including your partner, including our kids, including anyone, nobody in this world is in control of anything. Control is an illusion. None of us have ever been in control to begin with. And as a reformed control freak, I can tell you this, nothing is more freeing than releasing control and learning to live in the present moment, learning to release your grip on what you think should happen and just be okay here now with what you have got. And the only thing that we can control is the thoughts that we think, the thoughts that go on inside of our heads. So if your thoughts are full of worry and fear and grief and panic and anxiety and thinking that the world is ending, then I would really invite you to use this opportunity to spend time, you know, practice meditation, journal in the morning, journal in the evening, practice yoga, practice presence. These are tools that are going to help you not only get through this time, but also bring you to a a place in your life that you feel better no matter what is happening. And whatever you're feeling right now, I want you to allow yourself to feel that. And I also want you to remember that you are allowed to feel afraid and grateful at the same time. Our feelings are just feelings. Our feelings cannot eat us. They cannot eat us. They're just a feeling. And so what I would invite you to do in this period of uncertainty and during this time of not knowing what tomorrow is going to look like or what next week is going to look like or next month is going to look like, what I would invite you to do is realize that this is always the way that it's been. We have never known what tomorrow was going to look like. We have never known what tomorrow was going to bring. We have never known what 10 years down the road is going to bring. And what I invite you to do 
is be so grateful that here now in this moment, you are still being given an opportunity to live your life. You still, if you are listening to this podcast episode, you still have the gift of life. You still have the gift of resilience. You still have the opportunity to create the life that you have always wanted to live. And nothing has changed. Nothing has changed except the way that you are choosing to respond to your environment. And it's funny because I get it because I always think, I always think I have things figured out and then life changes, curveballs happen. But before I had a baby, I didn't know how to be a mom. I figured it out. Before I became a wife, I didn't know how to be a wife. It happened and then I learned how to do it. Before I became a stepmom, I didn't have a fucking clue how to do it. It was one of the hardest things I've ever done was to learn how to be a stepmom. But I learned how to do it so well that now I teach women around the world how to be a stepmom without pulling their eyeballs out of their sockets because there are ways that you can adapt to any situation. And right now, humans were built. Humans were built to survive. Humans were built to evolve. Humans were built to adapt to their situations and their circumstances. And right now, you are living history. Right now, you get to say in 60 years to your to your grandkids, to your great-grandkids, yes, I lived through the toilet paper crisis of 2020, and this is what I learned. This is such a This is such a gift that we are given right now to be sitting here listening to this while the world is in crisis and you get to choose what you do with your feelings and you get to choose what you do with your life. You get to choose to make this one of the biggest learning and growth opportunities that you have ever been presented with. So take a step back, ask yourself, what is important in my life? What is important in my life and how can I make sure that my thoughts support what is important in my life. And above all else, stay home, love yourself, wash your hands, be careful of everybody else's hairspray, and remember that our life is a gift. And you deserve an even better life. Cheers to that. I hope this episode got your wheels turning and showed you just how powerful you are. I would invite you to take 30 seconds and tap subscribe to this podcast. When you subscribe to the podcast, then rest assured you will never miss an episode. And in no time, spinning your wheels will be a thing of the past. Thank you for listening and subscribing. And if you enjoyed this episode, it would mean the absolute world to me if after you subscribed, you jumped on over and left me a five-star review and better yet, a written review. I am on a mission to let every mom and stepmom know that you can create the life of your dreams. And I need your help to change the world. The world needs us. Thank you so much for subscribing and leaving me a five-star review. I will see you next week, same time, same place. For more behind the scenes action and to get really up close and personal with me and our beautiful step family, jump on over to Instagram and follow me at the step queen. Don't be shy. Send me a DM. Tag me in your posts. Tag me in your stories. Let me know what you're up to and what about the podcast has been blowing your mind. I cannot wait to get to know you better. And Instagram is my jam. I love you so much. I love you so much. Make it rain, girlfriend.